So, I'm usually not a fan of air gap wallets, mainly because they're not as user friendly or enjoyable to use as non air gap wallets, but I'm always open to having my mind change. And if there was one wallet that was going to change my mind, it'd be this one. This is the Era wallet. It uses a mix of features from other wallets like Tangem Seedless Backup, Keystone's QR code transactions, and Ledger's e-ink touchscreen, and it does all of that in a way that actually makes sense and is enjoyable to use. Plus, it has some other extremely useful features that a lot of other wallets don't offer. Which made me wonder, okay, what's wrong with this thing? And I did find a couple of things that could be a deal breaker for some people, but let's talk about the good stuff first. And if you decide this is a wallet for you, Era is offering 10% off your entire order using the link and discount code down in the description. All right, let's start with the design. It's pleasantly simple. It has the same footprint as a card. It's about five cards thick, and it has an extremely small hidden camera on the back for scanning QR codes, but we'll talk more about that later. The screen is what really surprised me though. It's a good size at 2.7 inches. It's also made from Gorilla Glass 6, which is drop proof and scratch resistant, but that's not what surprised me. It's performance did. Most of the touchscreen wallets I've tested fall short when it comes to responsiveness and sometimes even accuracy, especially the e-ink screens, like the ones used on the Ledger touchscreen models. They're accurate, but they have a slight lag. But Era's touchscreen is quick. Even placed side by side with the Ledger stacks, you can see how much faster it responds to touch. It also has haptic feedback, which gives you a nice sense of touch. Oh yeah, it also has a front light, so unlike Ledger, you can actually use this in the dark, all of this is wrapped in an aluminum frame with a plastic backplate, giving it a solid weight. Not so light that you forget you're holding it, but not awkwardly heavy either. It's even IP67 rated thanks to its fully enclosed design, which means it's dustproof and water resistant up to 30 minutes when fully submerged. That said, did you notice anything? No? I'll give you a quick second, just take a look at this. Okay, so there's no USB-C port or any opening on this wallet. That's because it comes with a wireless charger, which is the only way you can charge it. So it is nice that it comes with a wireless charger and it makes sense considering that's the only way you can charge it. But the one thing I did notice is it doesn't come with a USB-C cable, which I'm sure we all have sitting around our house by now. But if you don't, you're going to need one. But it does come with something else we're beginning to see a lot of other wallet brands start to incorporate, and that is a recovery card. In fact, Era comes with three recovery cards. And I think that's a perfect segue into the overall user experience of this wallet. In terms of usability, Era is like a mix of Tangem and Keystone with a touch of Engrave. And if you don't know what all that means, well, I'm going to show you. So let's start from the beginning. To turn on Era for the first time, you have to place it on the wireless charger and wait a few seconds. This is because it's shipped in battery storage mode to keep the battery healthy for as long as possible. So placing it on the charger for the first time wakes it up from this mode and switches it into normal operating mode. From there, press start, scan the QR code, download the Era mobile app on your iOS or Android phone, and it will begin a series of updates. And this is one of the main gripes I had with this wallet, which really isn't a big deal in hindsight, it just caught me off guard. It took about 12 minutes to do all the updates. Now, to be fair, there were four separate updates, so that's about three minutes per update. Again, not a big deal, I just wasn't expecting it. But here's the cool part. All the updates are done over NFC, so there's no cables or SD cards that you have to mess around with. Like with other AirGap wallets, you just set your phone on the wallet and it downloads all the updates. Now, a quick side note about this. Since the Aero wallet uses NFC, it's not a true AirGap wallet. An AirGap wallet wouldn't use NFC. However, the NFC is only used for updates, so all the transaction signing is still done using QR codes, which is the AirGap method, and that's why I call it a partially airgap wallet, not a fully airgap wallet. But as many of you already know, airgap wallets aren't actually any more secure than a non airgap wallet. They technically have less forms of communication, but even the forms that they do have are still susceptible to hacks, technically speaking. So I just want to put that out there. Anyways, back to the experience. Once the updates are done, there's a quick authenticity check. First, you scan the QR code on your phone using the wallet. Then you scan the QR code on the wallet using your phone, and that proves your wallet is authentic and ready for setup. Now let's talk about the setup because that is a huge part of the user experience. 
First, you can choose whether you want to create a four to eight digit pin or a completely unique password to access the device. This is the only wallet I've seen that lets you choose between a pin and a password. And I think that's really cool. After you set that, the wallet creation process begins. You get two options, create a new seed phrase or restore an existing seed phrase if you already have one from another wallet that you wanna use. If you're restoring, you can restore your wallet using the error recovery cards if you already had your error wallet set up before and are recovering it again, or you can enter a 12 or 24 word seed phrase from another wallet or even a 20 or 33 word Shamir phrase. But when creating a new wallet, which is what I did, two options appear, standard mode and expert mode. I tested both and the only real difference is that standard mode explains what you're doing while expert mode gets straight to the setup both modes end in the exact same result. So if you already know how seed phrases work, you're probably just going to choose the expert mode. Now, this is one of the things that's really unique about the Arrow wallet. So most hardware wallets, when they generate your seed phrase, they do it using something called a TRNG or true random number generator inside of the secure chip. This makes sure your seed phrase is truly random and that no one else knows it or can ever guess it. But Arrow uses five entropy methods to do this, whereas most other hardware wallets rely on that single one meaning it doesn't just rely on the TRNG inside the secure element, although that is part of the process, it relies on four other methods, including swipes from your finger, shaking the device, motion from moving the camera around, and a second TRNG inside the microcontroller unit. The only other hardware wallets I've seen use a similar entropy method are BC Vault and Engrave, and Era makes it really easy to do. But what's the benefit of having five entropy methods over one? Does that mean all the other hardware wallets that only use one method aren't as secure? Not exactly. Both produce a perfectly random seed phrase when used correctly. So it's more about redundancy and making the user feel good. It's a feel good feature. It's more about making the seed phrase generation process harder to break. So if one method were compromised somehow, there are still four other methods that are working to produce a completely and perfectly random seed phrase. So there might be a slight technical security advantage, but both methods are fine. Anyways, I got a little sidetracked there. Once you get to the backup part of the seed phrase, they give you two options, error card or paper. If you choose error card, it's similar to Tangem where it's a seedless setup. You just scan your error cards and it copies the seed phrase to your cards. But if you prefer to know your seed phrase like I do, then you would just choose the paper option. This lets you see and write down your seed phrase first and then back it up to your error cards. So it's basically the best of both worlds. Each error card also gets its own pin code that's stored inside of an EAL4 plus secure element chip to prevent physical brute force attacks. And just like the wallet, there is a limited number of attempts that you get for the pin before it resets itself. And after the cards are set up, you just name your wallet, choose an icon, and the setup is basically done. All right, so up to this point, I liked everything about this wallet. The design is simple, the screen works well, and setup is straightforward. But then it says this, link your wallet, as in link your Arrow wallet to your favorite mobile app, or you can skip this part. But if you skip this part, you'll have no way to manage your wallet because the Era app isn't for managing the device. It's only for the initial setup, updates, and authenticity checks. Which means you have to use a third party app like MetaMask or Rabi to manage this device, which is pretty common with other air gapped hardware wallets as well. A more recent example was the Keystone 3 Pro until they came out with their own app. And just to be clear, using a third party app is not a security risk because the keys to your wallet are still stored offline on the physical device and all transaction confirmations still come from the device. So this doesn't mean it's any less secure, but it does mean it's potentially less user friendly, especially if you have a lot of different cryptocurrencies on different blockchain networks that you might not be able to manage all from the same wallet app. So you'll have to use multiple wallet apps just to manage your one device. However, I did confirm that Era is working to make their Era app the all-in-one app. So not only will you be able to do your updates and set up the device using the app, but you'll also be able to manage all of your crypto and that should be coming out fairly soon. But until then, that is a major downside for me and that has always been the major downside for me when it comes to AirGap wallets. I really like having a native app that I can use directly with the wallet so that I'm not downloading a bunch of different apps. Next, we need to address the elephant in the room. Era is a brand new hardware wallet company. They're headquartered in Dubai. They were launched 
in 2025, so they don't have nearly as much skin in the game as more reputable brands like Tangem, like Ledger, Trezor, Keystone, none of them. So security is even more of a factor for this wallet. So let's see how it stacks up to the rest of the competition. For starters, we already covered a lot of the security features. It uses a pin or password to protect physical access. The cars use an EAL4 plus secure element chip, while the wallet itself uses an ATEX 608C secure element, which isn't EAL certified, but it is used in other popular hardware wallets like the Cold Card MK4. Of course, there's also the firmware authenticity check that ensures you are using an official ERA wallet with official ERA firmware. It also lets you set up a standard 12 or 24 word seed phrase or a Shamir seed phrase for more advanced users. And something I forgot to mention, which is probably the best feature of this wallet, is it allows you to set up and manage 10 separate seed phrases on this single device. So you can essentially have 10 different cold wallets in this one device. And you can name each wallet so you know which one is which. This is huge because most wallets just don't offer this feature. Another useful feature is something they call Era Lens. This is an anti-blind signing feature that turns the full transaction into a human readable format so you know exactly what you're signing. This helps you avoid phishing traps, misclicks, and contract changes, especially if you're using it for DeFi. It's similar to Ledger's clear signing. So it has all the industry standard security features that you would expect from your hardware wallet, but it still lacks one main thing, and that's trust. There are generally two ways a wallet manufacturer can earn trust. First is through third-party security audits. Second is through open source code. So let's talk about the third-party security audits first. Era has been audited by Key Labs, which is a well-known blockchain security company who has audited other wallets like Keystone and Passport. All 37 pages of this audit are available publicly if you wanna read through it. I'll drop it in the description for you. That said, I did skim through the vulnerability section that was originally found during early pre-production testing and Key Labs confirmed that everything has been fixed in the retest, so the production units are as secure as they can be. So now the only thing we're waiting on is for ERA to open source their wallet, but because their company is so new, this will likely happen over a period of time. However, I did confirm with the team that they are planning to open source a wallet as soon as possible. Okay, so this thing is user-friendly. It has all the security features plus some more advanced ones, and it's verifiably secure. What about coin support? Like most new wallets, it's not great, but it does support all the popular options like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Base, and several others. Plus, you can actually go on their website and request which blockchains they should support next, and they'll prioritize those networks for future firmware updates. So if you do end up using this wallet and want to help decide which coins and blockchain networks are added next, make sure to leave your feedback on the website. But yeah, this thing actually surprised me. It's easily my favorite airgap wallet on the market. It works well. You don't need to be an expert to use it like with certain other airgap wallets. And it even has some of the bells and whistles that the more premium wallets offer, like Engrave's multi-entropy setup and Tangem seedless setup. And surprisingly, it's still competitively priced at $226, or even cheaper if you use that link and discount code in the description of this video. So if you're looking for an easy to use airgap wallet, definitely check out this one. You can watch my full user guide in this next video. I'll see you over there. God bless. Okay, bye.